Over to you. Okay. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Morning. Good evening, wherever you happen to be. Uh, my name is uh, Karen Alkali Gut, and as chair of the Israel Association of Writers in English, I'd like to welcome you all to our event celebrating Erica John and her poetry. There are thousands of ways to introduce Erica Junk, with the story of the incredible excitement fear of flying created when it was first published and has continued to create since it's always been in print. It's been reprinted and reprinted. And, it, and, and the more recent fear of dying. Uh, and, and then we have last year's affirmation in this uh, wonderful new book, The World Begins With Yes. Since the very beginning, Erica Jung has been presenting us with the very subjects and feelings we're most afraid of, we're never supposed to talk about, and has dared to confront them, to deal with them, and, and even to enjoy them. I know you all know Erica Jung explored sex at a time when the subject was still forbidden and was roundly excoriated by the critics threatened by this new sexuality. <laughs> but she forged on and confronted them all and continued and triumphed. She's the one who has influenced not only women's writing, but the entire way women are perceived in the media. All this you probably know, but you may not be aware that she also confronted the stereotypes of classic literary models in novels such as Fanny and Shylock's Daughter and Sappho's Leap and in non-fiction such as her work uh, on witches and her dialogue with Henry Miller. And all of these things, her celebration of sexuality and the experience of life, her knowledge of literature, her confrontation with the idols that are part of our society, all, all are part of her poetry. They're all part of the poetry that's been in, integral to her literary career from the very beginning. It's a poetry that's become more and more inclusive with each volume and has come to incorporate all subjects. This is a poetry that breaks all generic boundaries and all subjects. It's not surprising that, that uh, Keshev Press, the publishers of poetry and Hebrew translation of many of the world classics, uh, American icons such as uh, Walt Whitman, Emily Dickinson, Elizabeth Bishop, Robert Haas, and others, and as well as Jewish women from all languages, it's not surprising that they took on the project of issuing a volume of Erica Gut, of Erica, Erica Gut, I've just taken you into my family, Erica Jugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Erica Jugs, uh, a, a book in the, come, in the coming year, her collection of poetry. We're honored this evening to have with us the publisher, the translator, and the publisher, Daphne wow. Budish and Rafi Weichert, to read the poems in Hebrew that Erica has chosen to read in English for this event. Erica, it's wonderful to see you. I welcome you here and to be Thank able you. to introduce you to this wonderful audience and your translators who will be, you'll be hearing for the first time and you're meeting for the first time. So I think we should begin because I'm talking too much already. We should begin with, I always talk to you, with, with, um, with a poem from your latest collection and the translation. I will interrupt your reading after the Hebrew with a question or two, but most of my questions I'll save until after. And then after that, Michael Kagan, who has been inspired to do the work of a thousand men in arranging this evening, will read the questions that were asked on chat and add some of Mm -hmm. some of his own that he wanted me to ask, but he's much better with this. So Erica, welcome. We're waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
poetry is, remains very important to me despite the fact that I've written novels because poetry makes you celebrate language and it teaches you everything you need to know about writing. So I never stopped writing poetry, even though the novels support us really and not the poems. Um, some of the poems come out of news. For example, do you remember the picture of the little boy on the beach, the dead little boy on the beach? That picture inspired this poem, Child on the Beach. The Mediterranean is black with bodies as in the time of the Trojan War when Homer sang of bloody battles and heroes lay unburied beneath the topless towers of Troy. But this little boy of three lies unburied on a beach. Where is he from? The chemical fog of Syria, the garbage dumps of beautiful Beirut, the chaos of civilization come undone. He rests, his parents lost, his sisters drowned, his brother thrown up on another beach. What shall I do with this dead toddler who breaks me open to grief? I will adopt him, my nameless grandson, welcome him into my shattered breast, his death so sweet, even cherubs weep, and nereids float him in their seaweed boats. Little one, now you are mine. Sleep in my arms while I sing you this lullaby. Maybe you'll awaken in a kinder world where children don't die at the edge of the sea. Meanwhile, dream of peace for this broken world. This is, let me introduce you to Rafi Reichert and Daffy Kodish Reichert. Who will Hello. Be reading. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure and an honor, I must say. Yele de Thank you. I wish I could be there with you. But everything is done by Zoom these days. And with love, with love, with love and appreciation. With love and appreciation. Thank you. Yele de la The mental traveler. No, let I her read it. She's going to, uh, she's, uh, Abdafi is going to read the poem in Hebrew. You're going to hear it Great. for the first time. Okay. And then you can read them. Okay. Yele de la chof. Hayam atichon shachor migufot. כמו במלחמת רויה, שהומרוס שר על קרבות עקובים מדם, וגיבורים מתים לא נקברו תחת המגדלים החרבים של טרויה. אך הילד הזה, בן השלוש, ישן על החוף בלא קבורה. מהיכן הגיע? מערפילי הכימיקלים בסוריה? מהמזבלות של בהירות המעתירה? מהתוהו של חורבן הציוויליזציה? הונח, הוריו עבדו. אחיותיו טבעו, אחיו נפלט לחוף אחר. מה אעשה עם העולל המת שקורע אותי ביגון? אאמץ אותו, נכדי חסר השם. אאמץ אותו אל חזי המרוסק, מותו כה מתוק עד שהמלאכים בוכים, והנהדות משיטות אותו ברפסוד התעצות. קטנצ'יק, עכשיו אתה שלי. ישן בחיקי בעודי שרה לך שיר ארס. אולי היא תתעורר בעולם טוב יותר, שבו ילדים לא מתים על קו המים. בינתיים, תחלום על שלום לעולם המקולקל הזה. Do you think this poem makes something happen? That's a great a question. A I don't know. Poem. You know, poetry makes nothing happen remains true because most people 
don't read poetry, but occasionally some lines of poetry get into the culture and they become a light for other things. And if they're very I go think on, everyone go is on, on okay, mute. Go on, go on. Go on, Erica. No, somehow poetry finds its way into the culture and it does make things happen, but it's a long journey uh, for poetry to make things happen. It's really kind of an immortal journey. But we read a poem and we take it into ourselves and it influences the way we see the world. It, it does. It, I mean, there have been so many poems of yours that influenced me. And I think the first poem was a bitter pill for the dark lady. So right. many years ago that I, I, that made such a difference in, in the way I saw poetry and women's poetry. So I'm, uh, when I started real. to write poetry, all the women poets were like these virginal, um, nervous women. They did not partake in lust, in food, and somehow you had to be this strange, nun-like person to be a woman poet. And I thought that was absurd because I thought poets should experience the senses more deeply than other people. Mm -hmm. And of course we do. So the idea of being a woman poet who was sort of a nun was absurd to me. But mm -hmm. when I came on the scene, that was the way women poets were seen. Right. Uh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful reminder of how poetry has changed. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the next poem I think they're going to show on the screen Good. Is, uh, is, is about your acupuncture. Is that okay? Is that yes, here we are. What is it? Acupuncturist, can you see it? Oh, okay, got it. Are you ready for it in English? Yep. Waiting for my ancient Chinese acupuncturist to open the channels of life or chi, I drink his tea and admire the frozen river beyond his window and free my body to receive the force that heals or seals the gifts I've been given by the dead. Life comes from death, as we all know though we are loath to admit it. Give thanks. Death is not final, as poetry proves. As poetry proves. <laughs> okay. okay, good evening, everybody. I'm going to read Duffy's translation and from the ancient Chinese to the ancient Hebrew, <laughs> it sounds like this. Right. שיפתח את ארוצי החיים, או הצ'י. אני שותה פה תה ומעריצה את הנהר הקפו, מעבר לחלון, ומשחררת את גופי כדי שיקבל את הכוח המרפא או החותם, את מה שקיבלתי במתנה מן המתים. החיים נובעים מן המוות, כידוע לכל, אף כי אנו שונאים להודות בזה. יש להודות, המוות איננו סופי, מוכיחה השירה. as poetry proves, you say, proves, poetry proves that death goes beyond uh, life. And, and can poetry go beyond uh, 
I think your poetry does. I mean, may you have a long life. But I think your poetry poetry um, sticks in your head, and you tend to quote lines that you love, and that gives it a certain current. Sure. I think it's important. It. it it's a beautiful ready for the next thought. the next one is is be careful darkness i want to ask a question i'm going to take a privilege okay. here. you wrote a book uh, fear of flying and a book fear of death right dying. Tell, dying. Tell, tell us a little bit about this this how you got to that subject and we all fear dying or, or maybe not but tell about us. fear of flying fear of dying I, I felt that the books I read by noted authors did not deal honestly with women and with women's lives and women's feelings. And I felt that there was a hole there, there was um, a vacuum and that the male writers didn't really understand the way women felt. Of course, the great ones do, you know, Tolstoy and people like that, but the average writer doesn't. And I thought it was so important to have a woman's point of view and a woman's life in books. That was really my desire. And what about your book, Fear of Death? Fear of Dying. Um, fear of Dying. Um, it was a book that began when I lost both my parents. I think you don't really understand mortality until both your parents are gone and you help to take them over the boundary between life and death. And then death becomes real to you when you lose your parents. Mm -hmm. So it's a book about losing my parents and how it changed me. It changes us all, I think, when we lose our parents. You know, my, my daughter often will call me up and say, how are you? Are you okay? As mm -hmm. if she knows that someday she'll have to know I'm not okay. Um, Jonathan Swift said uh, when, he, when he lost his mother, I have now lost my barrier between me and death. Ah, beautiful. Uh, this is what your, the fear of dying was about, isn't it? So beautiful. And of course, Swift is one of my favorite writers. My field in graduate school was 18th century satire which I loved and which influenced me very much. I love the satirists and Swift particularly is one of the greatest of them. To me too, to me too. Oh, more poems, poems. More poems. Well, be careful darkness. Be careful, let's see. I love, that's a line from Whitman and Whitman, is amazing. Be careful, darkness, Whitman wrote. He knew the claws and paws of darkness, how they capture light and try to blind our eyes to hope. Darkness at the edges of our being. We ourselves are light, pushing aside the darkness as we move, standing still, lets the darkness in. Ishamri Afela, Katab Whitman. Who yada et of Reha Fela, the Kapoteha, Echen Lochdot at the old Minnesot Lever at a Nenu, the Tikva. Hafela, she did so few menu. Anachno, he nenu a old, she talked to a hodefeta Fela Shulain. העמידה במקום נותנת מקום לאופל. 
so beautiful. It's really beautiful and a beautiful reading. And you hear the you hear the rhythms are so are so imitative, so so uh, mm -hmm. they sound like the same the same poem. Uh, and it's so yeah. hard to do that in Hebrew because the uh, the, the accents are different. So that it's uh, I, I'm pretty amazed. This is the first time I'm hearing them too, and uh, I'm pretty amazed by the the way poems your poems sound always so casual. I think people sometimes mistakenly think they are casual, but they're not. Yes. And they're really serious. <laughs> uh, and this one is actually the. Um, I think your next poem is the new theory, of um, right? Uh, let's see, mental traveler. New theory of love. Mental traveler after. New theory of love. Wait a sec. Okay, got it. Um, I read once in the Daily Mail, a terrible newspaper, that Earth stole one of the moons of Venus and that the Earth stole a moon away from Venus. And this accounts for love in our world new theory of love we stole the moon from venus that's how love came to our blue planet gravity rules us and love we were so close to that other heavenly sphere that we dragged its moon into our own orbit made it our own ever since then we have been ruled by love aphrodite is a tricky goddess unfathomable and fond of pranks. Imagine kidnapping a moon. But we knew we needed the strange chemicals of Venus, the odd elements and smells. Without those elements and smells, there can be no love. Like dogs, we think with our noses or think we think. Apropos Walt Whitman, we're going to publish next year his Complete Leaves of Grass. The, oh, previous translation, the previous translation in Hebrew was published in 1952, I think. So He is complete. a marvelous, marvelous poet. Um, a wonderful poet. Right. Teoria Hadasha al Ahava. Ganavnu Yareach mi Venus. כך הגיעה אהבה לכוכבנו הכחול. כוח המשיכה שולט בנו ובאהבה. היינו כה קרובים לספירה השמימית האחרת, עד שגררנו את ירחה למסלולנו, ניכסנו אותו לעצמנו. מאז ועד היום האהבה שלטה בנו, אבל ידענו שאנו זקוקים לכימיקלים הנדירים מוונוס. היסודות והריחות המשונים. בלי יסודות אלה ושלל הריחות לא תתאפשר אהבה. כמו הכלבים אנחנו חושבים מהאף, או חושבים שאנחנו חושבים. Universal. That we may be talking about women, but there's there's something that goes that's transgender, and uh -huh. trans, tra especially in their later poems, they go way beyond. Uh, I, I hate to say that way beyond feminism, but but uh -huh. feminism is very important to you, uh -huh. and, but uh, transcendence is also. Very important to you. You can see that mm -hmm. here when, we talk, when you talk about love. Uh, Michael had a quotation he wanted, he was uh, very interested in, in, in adding to this, uh, but I think that your poem 
speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. I have the quotation in front of me about what you said about how love is the most important thing in the world and there's nothing else that counts. Um, mm -hmm. And you, you feel it here. Uh, would you like to read another poem about why I hate the news? About what? Why I hate the news? <laughs> Let's see. There is a poem I love by Blake called The Mental Traveler. And it's a very confusing poem. So I tried to write my own mental traveler. I traveled here and there looking for wisdom in the body, out of the body, until I discovered my own breath was the way in and the way out, transcendence and independence, both at once. As long as we can breathe, we can be free. Breath is the magic carpet we have sought with too much thought. See how things are connected. In 1997, our first book to be published was uh, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell by William Blake. Uh, <laughs> so between he's an Blake. He's an amazing poet. Yeah. For the many years, he perplexed me. I couldn't understand him. And I just would keep reading the poems until finally I understood. Yes. In Hebrew, it sounds like this. Anosea hamentali beigvot William Blake. Nasati aneva ana vechipasti chokma. Betoch aguf. Michutz laguf. Ad shegiliti shehaneshima sheli hi haderech pnima. Vehaderech hachutza. Transcendentiud veatzmaut baba et. Kol od neshima beapenu nuchal לחוות חירות. הנשימה היא מרבד הקסמים שברוב היגיון חיפשנו ולא תפסנו. חיפשנו ולא תפסנו. That is translation. It's really, Blake is amazing, I have to say. And he was, of course, also a wonderful painter. Um, but he was such a creative spirit. He was a bit mad, um, as many poets are. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you read him, every time you see new depths in his work. Yeah. Yes. And one of the one of the problems with poetry today is that people don't read the old ones. And learn from yeah. Them. And you are one of the few poets I know that that. Uh, actually delves into Whitman, uh, Blake, here you even quote uh, Omar Khayyam. Uh, I in my family, everybody quoted Omar Khayyam all the time. <laughs> it's in the Shanghai gesture, they quote, you know, all the old movies they quote uh, Omar yeah. Khayyam, but he's disappeared. And, and he's so important to, um, to understanding what, what our problems are. And you're doing such a, you know, you have so many references that mean so much that people really should pay attention to how you're, you're, you have this dialogue with, mm -hmm. it, with it. And, and well, it's a dialogue it? with these um, previous poets that nourishes you, I think. Yes, yes, and and but one thing that's interesting is in, in the Hebrew, you have the same dialogue. It they make the same references, and it really, it, yeah, and it really works. It's not it doesn't iron out the poem, you know, like flatten it out. The Hebrew has the same kind of complexity. Um, I'm very impressed with the way these. Uh, these poems that seem so simple and yet are so profound can get translated yeah. into Hebrew. Uh, can we look at another poem? I, I really want to hear why I hate the news. Why? What? 
Why I hate the news. Oh, yeah. Why I hate the news. I always feel that the news um, is a war machine. Why I hate the news. We summon the gods, Ares for war, Aphrodite for love, Athena for the power of wisdom. All the A's of Parnassus bring their blessings to Z for Zeus. We thought we'd be safe with these, safe from harm, but soon we discovered the fickleness of Aphrodite, the power mad grabs of Ares and Zeus. Athena could not save us with her wisdom. She lies broken, the Acropolis, impossible to mend. Didn't you know not to lean on wisdom outside yourselves, her cracked fragments sing? Gods crumble. It's up to you. Right, exactly. You know, you, what you, you go on with God's crumble. It's up to you to put our wisdom back together. You make us in our image after all. Oh. It's true. <laughs> the cracked fragments of the gods. We have to revitalize them. And, and how do you end this poem? Uh, Greg, mm. yes. Spoiled. Didn't you know not to lean on wisdom outside yourselves? Her cracked fragments sing. I, we, have a, we have another version. That, mm -hmm. Wait a minute. That says, grandiose, spoiled, unreasoning. As Omar sang, tell me then who was the potter then, pray. Mm -hmm. Who the pot. Is that is that your version? Is that what you have? No, I have uh, why why I hate the news. I don't have the other one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just have to share a translator's dilemma with this poem uh, because it goes from A to Z, and in Hebrew, mm -hmm. Zeus is uh, Zion. It's the seventh letter. It's not the last one. Right. Uh, thankfully, it is also a slang term for the, for the phallus, which I thought would be a great description of Zeus. Right. Therefore, we use the, the letter Zion in both meanings. Madua ani metaevet chadashot. That's amazing. This only shows that I've studied my poetry from Karen. So she taught me the main things about Zeus in poetry. How wonderful. מדוואנימתאבתחדשותזימנוותקוללימארסלמלחמאפרודיתלהבאתנאבשבלקוחחמאכלאלפימשלפרנסוסמביאמינחותמלזיןבורזאוסחשבנושניימוגנימתמבת
<laughs> they come up well. Everything uh, in um, wisdom is ultimately about acceptance. Acceptance of being clay in the hands of the Father. Acceptance of yourself. All wisdom is that, I think. Is acceptance. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing, an amazing poem, an amazing, uh, and, and the fact that you, I don't know, I'm thinking about who we included, who, who po what poets you included here. Sylvia Plath, I think, somewhere in there. Uh, Omar Khayyam, I mean, we're, uh, you're bringing in things from all over. Uh, and it's really wonderful. Uh, Daffy, by the way, did her master's with me. Mm -hmm. It had nothing to do with uh, translation. She's just got English poetry down uh, uh, complete. How wonderful. It is. It is. It's, it's great. Uh, Aaron, you see, but she married a translator from the Polish. <laughs> yes. <That's with> me. <laughs> I didn't do, I didn't take care of that. That wasn't my fault. <laughs> and I had other things. A great art. Um, are we, are we, uh, do we have more poems? I mixed. I don't I know. Them. Do I you have a poem? Two, seven poems I, that are pretty. Yeah, we had not a bot, I think. I think we have them. Not a bot. Oh, the most important one. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so important tonight that Erica read not a bot when we're on Zoom and <laughs> we can't talk to each other directly. Not a bot. I am not a bot. Not a figment of some computer's dream created to sway elections. I am instead a flesh blood creation the goddess's typist tweeting out despair, trapped between zeros and ones. Let me out of this hacked computer. I want to go home, kill the bots and their cold computer casings, which never tell the truth and never will. Give me paper and ink, organic things that grow the simple flowers of love. I have heard from many that uh, the Hebrew translation is Bishop Valteichten for best. It always ends with Yiddish. <laughs> Can't help it. Lobot. Ani Lobot. לא הזיה מחלום של מחשב כלשהו שנוצרה כדי להטות בחירות. אני דווקא ילודת בשר ודם, קלדנית האלה שמצייצת בייאוש, לכודה בין אפסים ואחדים. תוציאו אותי מהמחשב הזה, אני רוצה הביתה. <laughs> הרגו את הבוטים ונרתיקי המחשבים הקרים שלהם, שלא אומרים אמת ואף פעם לא יאמרו. הבו לי נייר ודיו, חומרים אורגניים שמצמיחים את פרחי האהבה הפשוטים. Beautiful. I think that we all know that we've had a, a, a really amazing evening with this translation and this, uh, the originals. Oh, thank you so much, Erica. That was th the reading uh, amazing, and and it's you kind of fulfill that that wish that I've heard you say that you want to be a, an inspiration to women, to future poets. You've always thought about poetry as being so much more um, important than it is considered now. Uh, right, and, it's true. And we feel it. I can feel the prof prophecy here that you want to take it to the, the, the next generation and, and, and take it, take this world begins with yes as an inspiration for everyone. And I think that, that you have been an inspiration so far, so many years. Uh, you know, you once said in an interview, sexism still blocks talented women. Yes. Or they true. want to change the world, the more it blocks them. 
Is it still true? I think that's true. I think that's true. I mean, you know, we're, we're still the second sex, unfortunately. I think that my daughter's generation are less likely to accept being secondary. Uh, they are, they're fierce, um, but it's still, it's still there, the does second it, sex. Does it, does it block you? Does, I mean, do you still feel that reviews and, and the acceptance of your books are, is connected to sexism? Because I do. Uh, not really. I mean, I think I'm past that in some ways because I've gotten older. <laughs> Age um, makes you more acceptable as a woman. I think it's too much for men to accept um, intelligence and sexuality at the same time. Mm. Not all men. You know, of course, there are a few men who like very bright women, but the majority of men feel that it's an unfair thing for a woman to be talented and sexual. And it, so I don't know why. I hope we get past this. Yeah. I, uh, it certainly, it certainly felt in the reviews that you that you got that people were, that men were threatened. I remember even Christopher Lehman Howe. Yeah. Uh, I remember just even he, reviews. Yes, even although he, he was more accepting than many. Yeah, Alfred Casey. Uh, yeah. well, we will, we could list the whole thing. But that was that wasn't just the men. Think about the feminists too. I, I once wrote an article about the seventies and eighties. It was called the Lesbian Imperative in Poetry, about how how the only popular women poets were the ones that spoke only to women, that slept mm -hmm. with women. You know, there was like, you know, Pat Parker and uh, of course, Adrian Rich. And there were a whole bunch of uh, women poets. And, and that was the in thing when you were, when you were writing right. poetry at the beginning. In the beginning. Not, did that affect your, your, your poetry or your, or your reputation that you like men? <laughs> Well, it was, it, it, it was a non-qualifier for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, uh, women poets were supposed to be, if not lesbian, then somehow rejecting men. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know why. Maybe because for so many years that was a necessary stance Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm not sure why. I I just you know you remember when when Adrian Rich wouldn't let men into her readings. Right. That made her even more popular. Well, <laughs> that was a moment in feminism. Yeah. Uh, you can't get rid of one of the genders. <laughs> it's it's unrealistic. Yeah. I mean, I think it is important to allow more genders in, not um, banish genders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let it all. You know. <laughs> there, there's, there's another thing that you're letting in that other people don't, you know, are finding it difficult or found it difficult to acknowledge that is, you once said there's there's we've only had one third of a feminist revolution. Age is the last taboo, and it's so wrong because in a weird way, life is just beginning. You said right. But age isn't right. Um, it's the young and pretty women uh, who who uh, get attention, and older women are no longer, you know. A bit, they have no place. It's like they talk the prejudice, about acting. Yeah. The prejudice still exists. Um, yeah. Absolutely. That's what I remember when you wrote the book, Witches. I put it in my back here so that you can see. <laughs> it's tiny. That book, Witches, is, is really about the power of women that 
isn't, you know, is dangerous, is evil, is uh, right. You know, and the older you are, the the more dangerous. The uh, more dangerous you are. Yeah. I mean, there has always been this myth of the old crone who can kill you with her poisons. Right. Amazing. We see old women as dangerous in our culture. Yeah, and it, it may be. I don't think that we are dangerous. Actually, we are healers, but we are accused of being dangerous. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, you, yes, it's so true that we're accused mm -hmm. of being dangerous. Or were ignored. I mean, men, women talk about yes. being ignored. Older women uh, are talk talk a great deal about being ignored. Uh, but all right, so we've talked about sex. We've talked about age. What about age and sex? <laughs> You're Your allowed to book have has sex. something that really puts it all together. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. It, absolutely, Karen. You know, people are afraid of the idea that their parents might be having sex or God forbid their grandparents. <laughs> and Young people get very upset about that. And so you go right into that, you know, you just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you know, and that's one of the things about the, what, what you constantly write about the fear of things that you go ahead and do. <laughs> yeah. All the things that are-, are I think are, it's very important to, um, to go straight into the fear and what's the word and um, get rid of the fear. Very important. And how do you get rid of the fear? By doing all the things you're most afraid of. By, you must, you must do the things you're most afraid of. And that's so Question. I have a question on the chat. Um, yes. Two questions that are on the chat that uh, I'd like to ask you, or, or I will relate to you. One is, um, could you relate to the um, mythology of Sophia as being the woman of wisdom? That that is you know, all the way back from the from the Greek uh, times. Is that a, is that a, a myth that men have created, or, or is that something that you see under the cultural uh, surface. I, I hope it's still there. <laughs> I think that our society has focused so much on beauty and sexuality that in a way it's made wisdom less important. Mm. But we need to come back to that the older woman as a source of wisdom. It's, it's a very positive view of women. I do have a question for Karen, a question from Karen on the chat, which is, um, did you, or do you as a professor at a Israeli university, is there a glass ceiling? Is there, have you faced the kind of sexism and prejudice that uh, Erica has been describing? As oh, a poetess. Um, I'll tell you where it starts. It started when I was doing, when I got accepted to the doctoral program and I was taken into a room by five professors and they said, we want you to know that you're taking the place of a man. Now, oh God. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> and I felt- That's really wow. and That was in the States. And then when I came to Israel and I was writing about feminism, I was writing a lot about um, women writing about women and uh, I was writing right. about, uh, Chaucer's women. I don't know. I wrote a lot about women and I was also taken aside and said, this is not a serious subject. You're not going to get, <laughs> you're not going to get tenure this way. So what you have to do is write about um, Victorian poetry. So I thought, oh my God, that's so terrible. And then I got into Victorian poetry and it's uh, Robert Browning and 
all these guys, and they're all talking. This is business of the dramatic monologue, and they're all talking to dead women. Right. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> And so that was a perfect genre for me. <laughs> perfect, yeah. And uh, I could go on because I, I found this genre. I found that that business of uh, don't wake up. <laughs> and it's still there all the time. You know, you can see it in El Moldovar's uh, Talk to Me. You can see it in a lot of films and, and literature, this business of uh, right. I love you, but just shut up <laughs> right there so it there is a it's, it's not a glass ceiling but it, it until recently it was very seriously uh, uh prejudiced against uh a trivial literature the trivial and also fear yeah. fear of women uh what is the fear of women what is the fear of women yeah. Well, one of the things think about the the fact that the women when they uh, when they go into any field, the the prices go down. You know, like when men were typists, they got good wages. As soon as the women came, right. in, everything went down. Same thing with hairdressing, um, and I think with writing. I think there's a great fear that women will take over. I'm thinking we'll take over the profession. Yeah, and cheapen it. That's uh, true. I agree. And and so that you know, the wise woman has is also dangerous. The old wise woman, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how attractive her thoughts are, there's there's this danger. Uh, Women are dangerous. I have another comment that reads like this. It says capital letters. Yes, yes, must say yes to life. Ah, uh, that's true. It's very difficult to say yes to life because life is very difficult. Mm -hmm. But we have to learn to say yes to life. Exactly. Even with all the difficulties. And why do we have to learn that? Because life is no fun if we don't say yes. <laughs> and we don't live. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we had this opportunity uh, to talk, to speak about yes, about yes. positive things in poetry. So, pe so many people think of poetry as something that, that has to be very serious and tragic about, you know. And gloomy. And gloomy, like my dog died. Right. Yeah. And, and, and really, uh, on behalf of the Israel Association of Writers in English and, uh, and Michael and me, I want to thank you. Incredible. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your books. wonderful questions. Thank Michael, you. thank you, too. Thank I you really so appreciate it. Us, uh, really, really appreciate it. it was, really fun to talk to you both. It's really a joy. We had fun too. And I'm I'm sure. gonna ask everybody, everybody who's watching now, um, whether they are stay muted or unmuted, that we all say a big yes together. Okay. 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 So, One, two, three. Three. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you. Your book is going to be a bestseller in Israel. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bravo. 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 It's wonderful to see so you. Some of you I haven't seen all year.